Welcome to our annual general meeting and our Alderman Sir Charles Keane um, lecture. Um, and let me first um, welcome John Cridland, who is the Director General of the CBI, and he is um, our guest speaker um, this evening. I'm um, very pleased to welcome you all here this evening and to thank the college, staff that are here, um, our key stakeholders um, and, and friends that sort of this is our opportunity to acknowledge all the hard work and achievement um, that we've had over the last 12 months <coughs> and just to take a moment to also look at um, what we plan um, for the next 12 months and it's a really important way for us as governors and there are a number of governors in the room this evening for us to talk to you as our sort of key community um, and, and stakeholders. Particularly delighted um, that John could um, find time in his busy schedule um, to come up and, and spend some time with us this evening and very interested um, in what he has to say. As some of you know, um, I've been a governor now for Leicester College for nine years um, and chair of governors for four, um, and this will be my, my final um, uh, uh, AGM as chair and as a governor. So I thought you might indulge me just for a minute, just to reflect on um, some of my time here um, over the last nine years. The first thing that someone added up for me is that over that um, nine years, there's been nine ministers, there's been five different government departments, um, we've probably given up counting how many white papers, consultations, reviews of skills, etc., etc. But only three director generals of the CBI. <laughs> so, my top career tip is <laughs> there's more mileage in being the director general of the CBI than a minister. In 2008 9, when Don arrived, he and Stuart cooked up a new way of looking at success rates, uh, and it's a kind of dashboard that shows at a glance how well we're doing. Um, and this was what the picture looked like in 2008-9. Um, by 2009-10, which is of course the year I'm reporting on, we're beginning to turn the map green. I think you might have chosen pink. No, no, green, <laughs> definitely the right color. Uh, but uh, if I'm to be honest, there is still more to do before we get to the utopia of every square being colored in green. There's a lot to be done on the skills revolution. We're only halfway on a journey. We should be proud of the progress we've made nationally and rightly what you've done in this fine college. But the times are testing. We need to ensure that the private sector can grow and one of the keys to private sector growth is that the work of this college and the work of all of Britain's FE colleges are, is as responsive as it possibly can be to a rapidly changing both public and private vocational training scene. We need to get the message across to young people as well as to more experienced employees that we want and need them to gain more skills and use them properly in the workforce. As your presentation, Maggie, shows, it's the energy of enthusi and enthusiasm of individuals that's the real glue in the system and ensures it works for their benefit as well as for ours as employers and providers. One last quote. Sir Walter Scott said, all men who have turned out worth anything have had the chief hand in their own education. He got one thing wrong. Should have been talking about women too. If men and women do need that push to set them on the right path or to get them back on it, we should be only too happy to be pushing. I hope that's a sentiment that Alderman Keane would have welcomed, and I'm sure that as we continue to mark his achievements, we would, he would be proud of yours in helping to provide the education and skills that the country needs. Thank you very much.